everyone. Welcome back to the Killer Spin Skill Academy. I am Felipe Morita. I'm here with Daniele Rios. We are both pros from Killer Spin. Today, we're going to be teaching the back and loop of block. For a full course of the Killer Spin Skill Academy, join killerspin.com and you can find all the information there. Thank you, Felipe. Now we're going to move on to the 4D studio, where one of our pros from Killer Spin is going to be teaching you how to do backhand loop of block. And after that, we're going to give you some comments and some tips of how to do it on the table. Let's do it. Let's go. Notice that uh, Biba now, when she's performing the backhand loop of block, she tends to stay a little bit far away from the table. It's a little harder uh, backhand loop of block than when you're closer to the table, but let's analyze this shot. So she's like far away, her legs are almost like parallel. She's gonna open her elbow a little bit so she has more uh, room for following through the stroke with her uh, forearm and wrist. And then she's gonna counter the ball like almost on the side and then she's gonna close the bat. So she can perform the loop in that distance that she is from the table. Notice that right after she finished the stroke, she, her racket is always pointing kind of to the corner that she's aiming uh, the shot. She's gonna reload. Uh, for the shot, racket low, contact the ball in front of her, follow through with her wrist, and then forearm. Yes, something important is that she always hit the ball in front of her body. So you need to be active on your feet and always try to move your body where the ball is. Nowadays, the backhand loop is also equally important as forehand loop. So this is something that you need to pay attention and you can also do a lot of good shots with your backhand. Correct. Especially uh, uh, from the backhand from far, I want you guys to try to use a little more of your shoulders and a little more, more of your upper body. So your swing is a little bit longer. Look how Biba finished her stroke, like all the way to the end, she closed her back to finish her stroke. So guys, for the backhand loop of block, it's a little bit different than uh, backhand counter. First, like you're not gonna hit the ball flat because usually when I do the backhand counter, I open a little bit the racket so I can hit the ball flat. When I'm trying to do the backhand loop out of topspin, which is she's gonna be blocking to me, I try to get my elbow a little bit out. I'm gonna bring my racket and my wrist towards my belly, and then I'm gonna finish towards the corner that I'm aiming. So I'm gonna be going cross court, so I'm gonna finish in cross court. It's very important, the same uh, way I explained about the forehand loop, about creating some distance from the ball. To generate spin is such a short uh, stroke, short, uh, short shot, uh, it's very important you to create some distance from the ball, bring your wrist and follow through with your shot. Always here. If you're closer to the table, your stroke should be really compact, but if you're going Far away from the table, you should open the racket a little bit more and your stroke should be a little longer and use more of your body. Let's start like a little closer to the table. Uh, I'm gonna be blocking for Daniele and she's gonna be demonstrating. So for blocking, same thing. I'm gonna be in position of the back end. I'm right-handed, so I'm on the left side of the table, about a foot from the table, and I'm gonna be controlling for Daniele. And Daniele is gonna be brushing the ball and performing the back end loop, okay? So you, can, you guys can see that Danielle is the one who is attacking here. I'm just trying to control the ball for her. I'm trying to absorb the impact of her shots. So notice how relaxed Danielle was when she was performing the backhand loop. It's very important. The, the, the backhand loop of block, I always say, is a lot of wrist timing and forearm, you know? So we have to, the key to have a good power and a good brush. It should be relaxed. And when you catch the ball, squeeze the racket a little bit so you have an extra, you know? juice on the ball. Very important, you feel with your wrist and your forearm the timing for that. Yes, um, something that I have to say that also is important, um, as in when you were doing forehand loop of block, your feet all the time are gonna be active mm -hmm. and you're gonna try to hit the ball in front of you. Mm -hmm. Some common mistakes is that when the ball comes to the side, people try, you know, to hit it from here, so you're gonna be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And maybe your, your stroke is gonna be a little bit weak. Of course, if you don't have time, that's something that you can practice and develop um, in the future. But right now, when you're practicing your backhand loop of block, try to always move and hit the ball in front of your, of your butt here. 
That's very important, Danny. Uh, one thing uh, that Daniele said is about your timing and the position where you contact the ball. You don't want to try to do too much far away from your body here. Always from your center, you know, and try to keep always the ball in your center. So it's going to be easier for you. Try not to. A lot of times, like people reach for the ball too much. See how my arm is extended? You don't want to do that because then you lose momentum. Same thing when the ball is get too close to me. I know you're going to be kind of eating the ball, you know, because the ball is too close to me. There is a sweet spot right here in front of you where you can always catch the ball, which is around here for me. Always here, here, here. Here is too early, here is too late. That's very important what Daniele was saying. So Daniele like, uh, is performing really close to the table, so she has to be always like hitting and having your, her feet active. For example, if I block for her, one in the corner and one in the middle, she's gonna be moving and performing the same stroke. So she's always like have like her feet ready to move, you know? Yes. Some common mistakes is that sometimes people put the elbow too high and then you're gonna be stiff or have pressure on your shoulder. Uh -huh. And sometimes they also have it too low. It's better to be natural here in the middle. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna feel comfortable. Also something that is important is to be patient, wait, wait for the ball to come to you, okay? Correct. If the ball comes fast, it's very important that you have to react fast. If the ball comes slower, you wait for the ball. So let's say Daniel is going to be playing a little bit. I'm going to change it. I'm going to give you some fast, a few slow, so you're going to show the tempo how, okay. how it changes, right? See how she always adjusts her position and her timing according to the speed of my ball? That's really important too. I would recommend you to do multi-ball. So we have a bunch of balls here with me. And I'm gonna be throwing balls for Daniele. So she can flex her back and loop. Notice that I give her a little more time to, to perform. And when she's comfortable, then I can go a little bit faster. Just off my hand. Thank you guys for watching. For a full course of the Killer Spin Skill Academy, go to killerspin.com and you can find all the information there. And see you guys next time. See you.